Okay, 8.2, uh, solving problems that involve rates. Uh, so we talked about 8.1, um, we talked about unit rates and comparing rates. Uh, if you have two rates that you want to compare, it's a good idea to change each of them into uh, unit rates. And of course we need to use the same, uh, the same units. So in this example from 8.1, we had uh, two turkeys. Uh, one was uh, $42 for 12 kilograms and the other one was $149 a pound. So in order to compare those, we want to get to unit rates in the same units. So that's just a bit of a review from 8.1 um, for that. Now 8.2 is talking about solving problems. So we're going to be doing a lot of the same thing, but it's going to be in the context of a problem. So we're going to kind of look, look through that a bit. Uh, so let's take a look at this, learn about the math here. The very first one here says, Jeff lives in a town near Canada, U.S. border. How many of you have driven through the U.S. border? Yeah, okay. And so uh, how many of you have driven through in B.C.? In the south of Cranbrook there, yeah, okay. So that's the one I was on just this past summer. And there's lots of, uh, there's lots of signs saying, remember you're in Canada, remember it's kilometers per hour, not miles per hour. That's my, that's the, my favorite one. Uh, and there's several of them as you come back into Canada because people in the U.S. are used to miles per hour, so their speed limits are like 50, you know, 55 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour maybe. And then all of a sudden they see a sign that's 110, and they go, whoa, we can go really fast here, that's awesome. But then they don't realize that's kilometers, right? And so this is, this is really the essence of what we're learning here. I mean, those kind of conversions, you're not going to get out your paper and pen and say, okay, exactly how many is that? You know, miles per hour is that, but I mean, you could, right? If we had a problem like that. So anyway, so Canada-U.S. border, there's lots of different units uh, changing uh, there. They use uh, gallons, as in this question, okay? We use liters. Um, our prices are in dollars per liter, and in the U.S., it's always dollars per gallon, okay? They don't use liters in their, um, you know, at their, uh, at their gas stations. They, they always uh, sell in gallons. So it says the gas tank of his truck holds about 90 liters. Uh, he can either buy gas in his town at 106 per liter or travel across the border into the U.S. to fill up for 286 U.S. dollars per gallon. So which option seems to make the most sense economically? So again, context of a problem, okay, guy needs to get fuel, he can go across the border, he can stay, stay home. Now he's going to travel uh, a ways, probably get across the border. Not too far, but that might need to be considered into his decision making. But if we're just looking at the prices alone, what we need to do, again, like 8.1, we need to make sure we get them to the, uh, the same unit, uh, both for the price and for the volume of gas here. And then notice here, this is $1.06 <coughs> in Canadian, and this would be 286 American, right? So there's a difference, there's an exchange rate there. So this isn't just apples to apples here even though it's both dollars, they're different dollars. And then of course, liters and gallons, uh, those aren't equal. So lots of times what we'll have to do is we'll have to do several little conversions in order to get you know, to a place where we can answer the question. So the question would be, you know, which option makes the most sense uh, economically? Okay, so this is how Jeff uh, solved this problem. This is how he went about solving the problem. The cost to fill up in Canada is this much. So it's 90 liters times 106. Now, this part, I'm going to stop right here. Did I mention to you guys, have I talked to you guys about unit analysis recently? Unit analysis? No, I, I think um, we covered it briefly in physical science that many of you were in uh, with me. When you're doing conversions, uh, a, lot of times, a lot of times students don't know when to multiply or to divide. Okay? What? What's funny? Okay, we, are we good to keep going or yeah. did you have a question or no? Okay. All right, so as I was saying, students sometimes don't know whether to multiply or to divide, uh, how to, you know, uh, how to do that conversion stuff. So unit analysis is, is the, uh, the concept that we use to make sure we know how to do that. And really what we do is we take um, the one quantity that we want to use and another quantity that is related to it and whether we multiply or divide is how we set up an equation that looks like this with including the units. So in order to find the cost, okay, in Canadian dollars, then we would have to multiply 90 times this 106 dollars per liter because 
this leader's unit on top and this leader's unit on the bottom would cancel out. And so what we'd end up with right, is 90 times uh, 106, which is about $95.40. <coughs> and that's going to be in what units? That's Canadian dollars. Okay? And the leaders are, are gone. So that's how you do that conversion. Because uh, honestly, that might seem obvious to you, just multiply, and maybe, it, maybe that is obvious. But um, once you have to start doing several calculations, then you know, when you multiply and divide. And in science, so we did it in science, <coughs> there was a number of multi uh, conversions that we had to make kind of all at once. So unit analysis became very important. All right. So we'll go back to the text here and take a look at what keeps going on here. So 95.40 to fill up in Canada. Converting 90 liters uh, to U.S. gallons, okay, another conversion we have to do. So again, using unit analysis here, the 90 liters, if you multiply that by the conversion rate between liters and gallons. So for U.S., it's, it's about 3.79 liters per gallon. And in order to know whether we multiply or divide here, we have to make sure that the liters cancel out. And so that we're left with just uh, gallons. So 90 liters you multiply by 1, divide by 3.79. So that's how you know you multiply, your, your divide there. 90, really, this is 90 divided by 3.79 to get 23.746 gallons. Okay? So you're with me so far? This is all these little tiny conversions. Again, unit analysis is something that um, really you should uh, get in the habit of doing. It doesn't take you long to, to write the units. Um, it doesn't take you long at all, and you just do your little stroke them out, and so you know exactly what you're doing, and you get the right answer. Because if the units don't cancel out properly, and you're trying to find gallons, and you end up with dollars or liters or something, you're like, okay, well, what did I miss? Then you see that you, you know. Plus, this way you can do a whole bunch of conversions all at once if you need to. So, it's handy that way too. All right. So the cost in U.S. dollars, uh, 23 gallons times two. 86 US. Again, gallons need to cancel out, so you multiply those two numbers. And we have $67.91, 92 cents. So the cost of Canadian dollars for 23.7 gallons is uh, this right here, gallons. And uh, they, again, we got to do conversion between Canadian dollars and US dollars. And so again, another um, round of conversions there. So when it's all said and done, we have to convert the dollars to make sure that those are the same, compare them to the same dollar, and the volume, we have to make sure we're converting this to the same. So um, it's going to cost $69 Canadian to fill up in the U.S. The difference in cost here, this is in Canada, this is in the U.S., is going to be about $26. So today it's more economical to fill up in the U.S., you say about $26. Bucks. Okay? So once again, uh, Okay, so this is the Canadian. So the dollars to dollars, all right? So you have to make sure that you're in the same dollar unit. And there's one was liters and one was gallons, right? So you have to make sure that both are described in the exact same units. Okay? Any questions? Come in boxes of 24. She estimates that she will need about 2.5 squares per person. How many boxes should she buy? So when you come up uh, against a problem like this, uh, it's always a good idea to draw a diagram if you can. Uh, doesn't really seem like drawing a diagram would help here, unless you're going to draw people eating squares or something, but that's not really going to help. It's not like a triangle or something you know, that's going to help you. So drawing a diagram, not a big deal. Um, but writing out what you're given and what you need to find sometimes helps out a lot. So we have 180 people, okay, 180 people, and what else do we have? We have um, dessert squares that come in 24, 24 squares, okay, per one box. So write them out as units, just list them out, and just so you can kind of see what's, what's going on. And she needs 2.5 squares per person, okay, uh, or for one person. And I'm going to use the same unit I used over here for people, okay, for one. So let's see. I don't know if we write this out here. The question is, how many boxes should she buy? So, so boxes is what we want to end up with, okay. So if you take a look at the information, the question, and you write it out, write down what you're trying to find, right? 
and then see how we can kind of figure this out. So 180 people, 2.5 squares per people. Well, we could figure out how many squares we need, right? Uh, 180 people, so this is the way I would solve this. 180 people, again, using my units. And I want to find out how many total squares I would need. So there's squares per one person. So you see how these units are going to cancel out if I multiply this? So this is going to give me 180 times 2.5 is what? 4, 450? Well, 450, someone checked that on your calculator. Check my mental math this morning. Is that right? 450 squares? Okay. So we need 450 squares. Now we're getting closer to finding out how many boxes we need, right? And so for this one, what else do we know? There are 24 squares per box. So this is where you want to say, okay, 450 squares. I want to multiply by something where I get rid of squares and I just have boxes left. You see? This will give us the number of boxes. So what's the conversion rate? It's 24 squares per one box. Right? And so here you know that you go 450 times 1 divided by 24. So that really is 450 divided by 24. That's going to be how many boxes you have or you're going to need. Okay? So 450 divided by 24 is 18. 0.75. So if you were answering this question, how many boxes uh, would you buy? 19. Yeah, very good. Okay, you'd buy 19 boxes. Okay, so you'd need buy, oh, that doesn't look like buy, you'd buy 19 boxes. Okay? I'm going to show you this one more time. That, now that's, that's me breaking it up into two small things. The, the, really the strength of unit analysis here, which is I think super important, is you can do all of this in one step. Okay, so let me just kind of go back here. I'm going to erase a bunch of this stuff, okay? You can, all, you can do this all in one step, and that's the strength here, again, of the unit analysis. So we have 180 people. We have 2.5 squares per people. I could go ahead and multiply this now by this unit and cancel off squares as well, all in the same calculation. Okay, so 24 per one box. And so here you know you 180 times 2.5 times 1, you don't even have to do that, and then divided by what's all on the bottom, 1 times 24. So that's 180 times 2.5 divided by 24, and that's how many boxes you need, and that's where you get your 18.75. Okay, so I went kind of fast there at the end, but this is the way to use unit analysis so that you don't have any question about whether you multiply or divide. Uh, all the units, if they cancel out properly, and you're left with the unit that you want. And again, the unit you want has to be on top. It has to be in the numerator. Okay? If it's on the bottom, um, it, that's not going to work. Okay? So if you're looking for boxes and you have 18.75 over box, uh, that doesn't work. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. Any questions at all so far? Okay, try this question from your text. Let's take a few minutes right now and just try that. And uh, I'll reveal the answer in a few minutes. Pounds per kilogram, we'll write that down here. Yeah. I'm not sure if you did this exactly the same way, but I'm trying to show you um, some unit analysis and how, yeah. You got around to the nearest minute, right? You're already in You're a step ahead on the cooking. So just okay, okay, okay. So, okay, okay. Let's just work through it. You might have got. Okay. So this number, shh, quiet. This number right here, rounded to two decimal places. If you use the whole decimal, I guess you might get a different one, right? So let's let's just see. Yeah. If you use this whole decimal, you might get a little bit different. So let me just check that out. Two point six eight divided by point zero six. Did you guys get this number? Zero six zero six. Anywhere? Okay, so if you did the whole decimal, you'd get closer to 44 minutes, which is fine. Okay, that's good too. So let's just go over, I'll change that, I'll change that, no problem. 44.2. Now, let's just talk about this. So, givens, right? Uh, what you're given, you got a total of 2.68 kilograms. This is a, um, 
This is the given rate, two pounds for every 15 minutes. And this is the conversion rate between pounds and kilograms. Okay, so this is the way I did it. You may have done it a little different way, but I just want to show you how the um, units cancel off and how to use the unit analysis. Okay, so two pounds for 15 minutes. All right, so the conversion rate was one kilogram for 2.2 pounds, so that canceled off the pounds. And that uh, leads us to, led us to this rate, 0 0.06 kilograms uh, per one minute, or that's 0 0.0606. All right, so now with that, what do we do? Well, we have a total of 2.68 kilograms, and I want to end up with time. I want to end up with time on the top, right, on the numerator. And so what I did was I flipped this around, so I had minutes in the numerator, because that's what I want to end up with. And then I um, multiplied, because I want to get rid of the kilograms, I just wanted to end up with the time. So that's when we did 2.68 divided by this 0 .0606 to get 44. And what's the unit? Minutes is what's left over <coughs> on, the, on the top. Okay? So again, that's good. If you use the whole decimal here, that's great. I, th I think um, that's fine. Uh, th that's ideal if you use the whole decimal place. So you got 44 minutes. Okay? Who all got 44 minutes when you did this on your own? Okay, good. All right. Did you do it a different way? Sim or similar or different? Okay. If, if you didn't show any work, if you just said, okay, I'm going to figure this out in my mind, I'm just going to multiply and divide until I get something that looks right or matches the back of the book, then you're, you're, you, you still need to work on this whole unit analysis thing. Okay? Um, I need to see that you guys have some kind of logical uh, approach. So if you got the answer and you don't know how you got the answer and you didn't communicate how you got the answer, that's a bit of a problem. Okay? So just you know, saying what you multiplied and how you got your answer, you need to be able to communicate that. Okay? And that's mostly for your own good because uh, lots of times when I ask students, okay, you got the wrong answer, what did you do? I have no idea. I just punched a bunch of things into the calculator. I thought it was right. So that's what we're trying to get away from. And at this level, you, know, you guys uh, should be able to start to um, put, your, put your thoughts down like that. Okay? All right, so that was... That was, I think, maybe a moderate to higher level question for this section. So that's good if most of you got that without any trouble. Oh. Just get Simon off a neighbor for now, please. Get the assignment off a neighbor for now. I'm just just finishing up something here.